And actually, uh, I'm the first giving the first uh, poster preview presentation. So uh, this is essentially um, uh, what uh, summarizes uh, uh, Dick's uh, talk. This is uh, our work on the um, uh, probing of concentric neutrals and in underground distribution cables. And we have some fascinating results. Again, we have not uh, had time to show all of the stuff that we've done. But uh, as Dick summarized, we've seen um, uh, all our methods work on uh, actually uh, um, underground distribution cables and actually being able to show signatures that show that, uh, you know, if you break a CN or if you actually break a number of CNs, you know, depending on which method you look at, you actually can see a change in the signature. And the exciting thing is that uh, this change is actually much more complex than we initially uh, imagined. So there is much more information content into these, uh, these signatures that we're seeing which is, again, uh, very interesting for us uh, to you know, continue our research and, and see how far uh, we can push this diagnostics method. So please uh, see our poster um, outside the doors. And this is uh, another poster that's, that's out there that I'm actually going to be uh, giving you a preview of. This is um, looking now at uh, more of the smart grid application and, uh, you know, if you going to put uh, sensors onto, let's say, these underground uh, distribution cables that are going to be in the ground for, uh, uh, you know, decades. Um, how are you going to power these sensors? And so we have a project here that is, um, uh, there are a couple of graduate students working on it. And, and the idea there is to, uh, to build a scavenger. So we actually, uh, and in fact, the idea there was uh, um, initially invented by uh, uh, Dick uh, White, uh, Professor White, um, how we can actually scavenge um, some of the power of that uh, wire, that current carrying conductor, and we can actually show that we can scavenge enough power uh, to, uh, to power a small sensory set and the radio um, out of that, uh, um, and that conductor. And this can also be applied to overhead distribution lines. Of course, using MEMS technology, this becomes really cheap um, and expensive, so uh, uh, what we think we can, uh, we can do is put uh, many of these uh, inexpensive sensors around uh, in the grid and and collect data, as well as uh, diagnostics data for, for our methods. So, again, uh, I encourage you to look at our poster, which, again, is out there. Hi, my name is Adam Tornheim. I'm a third-year graduate student with uh, Professor Devine. Um, my research investigates the effect of using aqueous electrolytic contacts to polyethylene on the rate of charge injection and also uh, the breakdown strength of the polyethylene. Um, I've seen a strong effect of some electrolytes, uh, the solution chemistry in solution, in terms of uh, how much current is passed uh, through my samples when compared to using metallic contacts. Um, and I'll be right outside with my poster. Hi, my name is Giovanni Gonzalez. I'm a PhD student in mechanical engineering, and my advisors are Paul Wright and Professor Richard White. And my poster is going to talk about the interdigitated dielectric sensor and the two methods that I'm u utilizing it to measure uh, degradation of the cable. So it's basically looking at the capacitance and also looking at the dielectric loss. Now, the, the, looking at the permittivity, I've kind of deviated that from that thanks to uh, advice from Professor Box that, and actually I've seen that, that you don't really see that big a change because of Semicon. So I've explored as to how really the Semicon affects these measurements, and that'll be in the poster outside. So, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Joe Wang, and I'm working with Joe Lemberg and Professor Evans. Uh, we are mainly looking at the mechanism watching from electromechanical aspect. Uh, so, as we all see here, uh, most watches tend to uh, develop uh, from insulation defect and uh, slowly form a multitude of water field microvoids. So the question to us is, uh, what is the electric field distribution around the void? And the, what, is the, uh, what is the electromechanical stress could develop from it? So, uh, and uh, bear in mind, these stresses are not static, and instead they are in a frequency of 60 hertz. So uh, then what, what will be the response of insulation under a cyclic loading? So uh, I think we uh, got some pretty interesting results here, and uh, both the theory and the experiments uh, shows that the mechanical fatigue could be a, a good approach to wall train. So, and then we are also now looking at the fatigue properties of, of TIXLPE. 
um, uh, at a high temperature as well as in corrosive environment. Yeah, so please welcome to our um, poster that I said. Thank you. Hi, my name is Christine Jessen. I'm a second year grad student and working for Dr. Tom Devine in material science. My research focuses on um, the uh, characterizing the corroded concentric neutrals that are found in the electrical cables. In my research, I corrode copper neutral samples and then use electrochemical impedance spectroscopy to, um, to gather the different components of impedance. And these impedance measurements can be used to uh, extract the dielectric constant of the um, of my corrosion layer that can be then used in COMSOL modeling calculations. Um, one of the major things that I've been working on in my research is finding a setup that uh, preserves the integrity of the corrosion layer that I develop on the copper samples, so that um, so that it's stable in all of my uh, experiments. And I hope you stop by my poster and learn a little bit more about my research. Thanks. Good morning. Um, my name is Richard Xu. I'm working with Professor Richard White and Professor Paul Wright. Um, my, the goal of my project is to increase the electrical energy efficiency in the quarry hall by monitoring its current consumption using our passive proximity-based current sensors. Recent, uh, in recently, we um, discovered the very nice linear relationship between the uh, output voltage and the input current. Uh, we also investigated the possibility of um, using the sensor as an energy scavenger to power small, electro el uh, small electronics such as radio modes and, um, and um, uh, signal conduction circuit. So you're welcome to sort of stop my poster for further information. Thanks. Hi, my name is Eli Leland. I'm a postdoc in mechanical engineering working with professors Paul Wright and Dick White. Uh, my research is on a MEMS sensor for AC current. It's a variation of the device you've just seen a bunch of times in the last few minutes. Um, so I actually made a MEMS uh, aluminum nitride piezoelectric cantilever and came up with a fairly novel way to put a uh, microscale permanent magnet on the end of it. I'd be happy to talk more about that. Um, the device works. Uh, I spent the last few months characterizing it, and now I'm working on uh, publishing those results and uh, getting a little bit better results, and I'd be happy to talk to you more about it. Thanks. Okay, so uh, those were all the poster preview presentations we have. Again, the posters are out there, and the students uh, will be manning them, um, ask, uh, answering all the questions you might have. Um, this concludes our before lunch session. So